How's it going, everybody? My name is Tentacle, and welcome back to more Pokemon Sword. In the last episode, we started adventuring through the wild area, and I fumbled my way through it. Like, seriously, I didn't explain Jack, and I am so sorry about that. So, it turns out I never explained what Watts even do. Let's just start there. If you see... NPCs that look like this, you can trade Watts for various items. Things like rare Pokeballs. I actually do need a dive ball for what I want to do. Technical records can also be found for Watts, and they're short for TR. I actually do want to get this Grass Knot TR because. There is a Pokemon that I want to catch here in the wild area, but the problem is, it was not the Pokemon I was thinking of in the last episode. Roselia is going to be the third member of my team, and oh boy, is Roselia good. And nice, this one's female. Again, like Matchbox, I didn't really have a good nickname idea for Roselia, if it were male. Roselia and its evolved form Roserade are some of the fastest grass-type Pokémon in this section of the early game. However, to evolve Roselia, you're gonna need this item called the Shiny Stone which you don't get until around the midway point of the game, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, in between episodes, I grinded for Watts and bought a bunch of Quick Balls in the process. It has a much higher success rate if you use it right at the beginning of battle. However, there's just one problem. Well, never mind! Okay! <laughs> I was about to say, Roselia has an extremely low catch rate, so it's difficult to catch normally, but whatever, I got it. Roselia, the thorn Pokemon. Its flowers give off a relaxing fragrance. The stronger its aroma, the healthier the Roselia is. And you know what? I'm gonna give you a nickname, since you're gonna be my third teammate. I know it has roses, but I cannot think of a better nickname than Sakura. It fits really well. So there we go. We now have three teammates, and if I'm not mistaken, in the next episode we could catch a fourth. Wait, hang on. Hang on, there is one more thing I forgot to show in the last episode. Here we are. This is a berry tree. If you approach a tree that looks like this, and it has a bunch of berries on it, you can shake it... ...and basically get a whole bunch of berries for free. Cherry berries cure paralysis, and Persian berries cure confusion. We've already seen Orin berries. Also, before I forget, if you shake the berry tree a bunch of times and it starts shaking about once per second, like that, then that's your cue to run away and grab the berries. I also grinded a lot of berry trees in between episodes. You're not supposed to be here! I can't even catch you right now! That is everything I missed from the last episode, so we can finally move on to Motostoke. And you're also going to see why I consider the introduction of this game to be especially long. Because, oh boy, do we have a lot of cutscenes and battles ahead.
I will say, though, this music is pretty good. And yep, sure enough, Sonya is over there by the Pokemon Center. I'd love to talk to you right now, Sonya, but I've already been to the Pokemon Center. <sighs> Whatever. You're supposed to come in here anyway because the game will tell you about two very interesting mechanics. The first one is customizing your league card. This is basically the replacement for the trainer card item from past generations. I'll probably be looking through that in between episodes to save you guys some time. The other thing I want to talk about super duper quickly is Pokejobs. They're an easy way to help your Pokemon gain experience points without actually having them in battle. So for example, this job wants normal type Pokemon. Unfortunately, I don't have any with me, but still, the idea is there should you choose to do Pokemon jobs. I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, Sonya here is saying we have to make it to the Motostoke Gym in order to partake in the gym ceremony. And yes, we can use that lift to get over there. Anyway, that's one out of several really long cutscenes down. There are quite a few interesting shops here in Motostoke. You can get your hair color and eye color changed here. There's another boutique. I believe over here. Yes! This is the Battle Cafe! Do not go in there just yet. You can also score a technical record here. Focus Energy. This raises the user's critical hit chance. However, technical records, or TRs for short, will break after one use. And I do believe you can get another one here. Or not. What are these? Yep, sure enough. I didn't even realize that was the purpose of those earbuds. And I'd know that Charizard cry anywhere. Here's Leon. Cole, all right? One look tells me that you become a trainer worthy of that endorsement I gave you. And yes, I reckon you might even be ready to use this. Here, try giving this to your partner to hold. We got a piece of charcoal. This item raises the power of the holder's fire type moves. Not really useful at the moment considering Matchbox only knows one fire type move, but it's still nice to have regardless. And real quick, speaking of which, I did give Athena a Rostberry. This cures the holder's burn status condition. And I gave Matchbox the Citrus Berry. This allows the holder to restore 30 HP if it gets to a dangerously low HP amount. 
Berries will automatically take effect whenever a Pokemon holds them and their conditions are met. So now... Yep, we gotta register for the gym challenge. I'm hoping we can take down this entire part of the game in this episode. I don't want to have to split this into two, but if I have to, I will. Oh, by the way, before I forget, I do have a little story to tell. As you guys probably saw, I did stream the Nessie vs. Aliens vs. Bigfoot Splatfest with a guest, and I had a lot of technical issues with my audio. I finally figured out the problem! So it turns out, there's a way to isolate my Discord VC audio on the streaming software I use. I just never figured that out because, to be perfectly honest, it looked so strange to me. So now, from here on out, all of my collab streams will be smooth sailing. Well, knock on wood, metaphorically. I also found a way to isolate my game audio, mic audio, and computer audio whenever I do normal OBS Studio recordings, or just when I do solo streams. So if I ever want to make clips, then it'll be a lot easier to edit. Anyway, I know I skipped over the dialogue there, but I did it on purpose. All we really have to do is enter a number for our gym uniform. And what better way to show my love for Splatoon than this, am I right? Alright! And yes, the league representative was saying we're able to go to a hotel to stay there for the night. And it's a good thing, too, because I do believe we're going to be getting a battle or two in here. Dang, we've already been recording for 16 minutes. I just might have to split this recording into two episodes. Now then... Sonya here is saying she found this really cool statue. It's a statue of the hero who once saved the Galar region. And yeah, give me the short version. A great black storm, huh? The darkest day? Hmm, interesting. And yeah, you'll be all right. Yes, I know, game. I've played this before. But we can't check in just yet, because there's a bunch of hooligans blocking the way, and they want to battle us. This, everybody, is Team Yell. These guys are the quote-unquote bad guys of the game. I put that in air quotes because, well, I guess I really shouldn't spoil it. You'll find out much later in the game. But trust me, those of you who have played this game before do know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah! Dang it, I completely missed out on that. Matchbox learned a new move in the time I was training. 
Double Kick. It's a physical fighting type move that hits the target twice in a row. Athena also learned a new move, but I'm not going to go over that until she's able to battle. For now, though, we can use Matchbox's newfound power to take down this Nicket. And dang, it actually survived the first of the two kicks. I'm impressed. And that's what you get for causing a scene, you stupid Team Yell grunts. And it's a good thing Hop was able to heal up our Pokémon, otherwise we would have been in trouble. Oh wait, I forgot! Hop is actually battling with us! I guess this is what happens whenever I go based off memory alone in my Let's Plays. Nice! Matchbox grew to level 15. You are very close to evolving, Matchbox. Just a little more. And that move that Zigzagoon used was Snarl. It's a special Dark-type move that lowers the special attack stat of all of its targets by one. Pretty useful, even if you have a physical dark type attacker. Now then, is that enough battling for you? What are you lot doing here? Oh, wait, it's her. I know you're all terribly curious about the other gym challengers, but you gotta show a bit of restraint. Sorry about them. They're just a bunch of fans. Call themselves Team Yell and follow me around, and cheering for me. I think they've let it all go to their heads a bit. Come on, you lot! Back home with you now! Sorry about all the ruckus, uh, Marnie, was it? Yeah, Shirty is right. Sorry if they caused you any trouble. So you're a gym challenger too. Team Yell, was it? Pretty impressive that you already have a set of fans to call your own. Hmm, not much for words, huh? I'm sure we'll become fast friends. Somehow. And finally we're in the hotel. Jeez. Hello there, Mr. Pokemon League representative. I almost said chairman, but no. I'm not sure if the game has said that those people in the black and white outfits are Pokemon League representatives, but they are. Now here comes the fun part. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Rose, Chairman of the Pokemon League. I know that everyone gathered here and everyone watching from home have all been waiting for this big moment. It is my pleasure to announce that finally, the Galar Region Gym Challenge will now begin! 
Yes, the gym challenge. Participants must defeat the eight gym leaders and gather the eight gym badges to prove their skills as a trainer. Only the most worthy will have the honor of challenging the greatest champion in history. Now, I would like to invite the gym leaders to show themselves. Oh, baby, here we go. I'm pretty sure this is the first time in the entire Pokemon franchise where you get to see all the gym leaders just right here. And they're kind enough to go in order, too. Starting with Milo, then Nessa, then Kabu, Is her name pronounced B or Bia? I can never remember. And then there's Opal, Gordy, and Raihan. That bit of dialogue is important. The way they said uh, they're missing one gym leader. That'll become important later in the game. Man, imagine how cool it would be to be in that scenario. I love it. Oh, and what's this? I guess Chairman Rose wants to talk? Oh, and what's this? I see you both already possess Dynamax bands. How wonderful! It seems you two have been led here by the guiding light of the Wishing Stars. Or, excuse me, the Wishing Stars. Pardon the lack of inflection. By the way, it was my wonderful company that invented those Dynamax bands, you know. I dare say this year's gym challenge is looking to be an absolute blast. Very good. Very good indeed. Hmm. Yes, please, let us go to the gym challenge. And yes, we gotta go to the first gym, which is in Turf Field, past Route 3, and onward, because there is a bit more than just that. Anyway, after that excruciatingly long set of cutscenes, I do believe I'm gonna be ending this episode off right here. Oh, hold on. One last thing. Nice! We can finally fly! It's basically skip traveling. Press the X button and select the town map option to choose the place you'd like to go to. Very, very nice. Now then. Yes, it is finally time to end this episode off properly. So, next time on Pokemon Sword, we're going to be going through Route 3 and beyond to reach the first gym, Turf Field. And hopefully, we can actually challenge the first gym leader. So until then, this is Tentacles signing out. Take care, everybody. Everybody, I say. And maybe my trainer will look different in between now and then. Anyway, see you guys next time. Goodbye!